Hey boo, come on in, have a seat, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Carolyn Gray and I typically post on Tuesdays and Fridays discussing fashion related content as well as my entrepreneurship journey living here in New York City. So, grab a snack, grab a little drinky drink. I should have did that before we started because I'm be thirsty, but it's all right. We're gonna get through this. We are going to discuss 2023 fashion trends, the ones that I will partake in and the ones that I will say no thank you to. No thanks. Um, yes, I know everyone's doing this video, but listen, you need a little perspective. Ain't no wrong with some perspective, some different ones. You know, everyone has an opinion. Okay, so I'm just gonna share mine real quick. Um, I'm gonna keep it kind of short, as, as short as possible, because there's a lot. There's a lot and I have a lot of notes here. Okay, so the first one I'm really feeling, sequence. Sequence everything. And I'm talking about big sequence, little sequence, little crystals. And some people say that the crystal thing is on its way out and I, I don't agree. I think we have been feeling super dusty for the last three years of this pandemic and we are ready to shine. We are ready to come out of our shell and we are ready to be glittery all over the place. Our souls and our outfits are going to be glitter. And I'm here for it. I'm partaking in that. Full throttle. I'm wearing sequins. It doesn't matter if it's not a holiday. The holiday is, is that I'm alive. Mm-hmm. Agree? Yeah, I know you do. Okay. The next one that I'm feeling is maxi length. I don't know what it is. You know, and I was really into it when it when it was out during the early 2000s, you know. I was rocking my long maxi skirts at my art camp playing Spice Girls. Um, yeah, they made me scared of Spice because I was the only black girl at the camp at that time. But um, I love a good maxi length. It's just something really regal about it. It just makes you look so much taller. It makes you look so put together. It's giving Morticia Adams, like, especially if it's in all black. Um, and still the midi, the midi length is still going strong, but maxi everything is what we're seeing the most right now. And I'm loving it. And it makes me feel like I should keep holding on to those lengths even after it's out of trend because obviously it's going to come back around. And I do feel really good when I'm wearing maxi length, especially skirts. I have a couple of long black skirts that I'm just like in love with. I'm going to try and find some and tag them below. Um... So you can check them out for yourself. And don't be afraid if you're, you know, if you're a petite little thing, you know, ain't nothing wrong with little petite action. You can still wear maxi. Just have it hemmed and tailored to you and it'll be perfect and make you look tall anyway. Mm-hmm. The next one that I'm really feeling is, and I've always loved this. I've always loved this particular style. Sheerness. Yes. Look at my skivvies. You don't need an x-ray vision. You could just look this way. I don't care. I love my skivvies. I'm into it. I'm here for the sheer. I'm here for all of it. I'm here for in the I don't I don't like it on the bottom part of my body. I like it on my upper. Like waist and up. Okay? But if we're going to do lower body then, you know, I want a little bit of a booty short situation so I'm covered there and then you can sheer the rest but i'm really here for it you know just seeing that all over the runways during the uh spring 2023 shows was just i was really feeling especially the prada skirts yeah i really like those will i buy that no not with my budget no but i do like them and i'll probably get a dupe mm -hmm. the next thing I mean, if you watched one of my last videos regarding my closet, which some of y'all came for me a little bit, like, okay, yes, I did a purge last year or the year before, whatever, and yeah, it may look like I didn't do anything. I have a problem. Why are you here judging me? I don't judge you in your closets, right? Okay then, yeah, I have. it, it looked like I added a lot and I took a few things out and that's where we're going to keep the conversation at. But don't come up in here judging me because my purge didn't didn't stay the way it was supposed to. I evolved and my closet evolved again. <clears throat> but anyway, y'all would have saw that Cargo's had its own little section on a shelf. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I love a good Cargo moment. I love Cargo's before it was even a trend at this point. You know, I think cargos are just a staple high waist for me. For me, I love a high waist cargo. It gives safari chic. 
Um, I'm loving the wide leg cargos as well. The baggy of the baggiest cargos. I'm not sure if I love the distressed cargos that I've been seeing, like Attico put out recently, but um, I love me a good cargo. I have a lot of cargos. Um, and you know what's funny? I have to eat my words. Last year I said, you know, that low rise was a big trend and it still is. It, it truly is. Like they're really trying to dismiss high rise and I will never let go of high rise. But I said that I wasn't going to adopt the low rise trend and um, by default and by choice, I have adopted the low rise trend. And what I mean by that is I've lost a lot of weight over the last year due to a few things, stress, change in diet because I found out I was allergic to many things that actually cause bloating for me. So if you, you know, go to your doctor and get a panel done real quick because I thought I was allergic to gluten and I wasn't. I was allergic to a lot of other things, including corn. And I love corn. Can't eat that shit no more though. I really can. But anyway, I found out I was allergic to several things and ever since I stopped eating them, I lost a lot of weight. So I dropped the weight in the beginning of last year because of COVID, I got a stomach virus, dropped a lot of weight, and then after that I found out about my allergies and I've dropped a little bit more and my weight was consistent. And then later, at the end of last year, I dropped like a couple of more pounds because of stress. So now I'm gonna start my new fitness journey on just building some, some meat on bones, you know what I'm saying? But Literally because of the weight that I lost, a lot of the pants that were once high rise for me are really cute low rise and you know, I'm not mad at it. I'm, I, I'm eating my words, like it's fine. I said I wasn't going to adopt it and I definitely did. So maybe never say never when I get to my no thank you list, but low rise cargo, I'm not, I'm not mad. Low rise anything actually. You know what I really think is gonna pop off this year and um, Fee Noel has a really nice set of them um satin or silk leisure pants in black and cream and really just like pastel -y type of colors i think that they're gonna go with so much and we're gonna see a lot of it on the streets it's an easy wear it's an easy wear but like keep your eye out for that one um corsets now listen it's that snatch situation you know i blame bridgerton i'm not i'm not mad the Bridgerton show, oh my god, that series, the Regency era, that era of clothing, of course we're seeing it everywhere, like corsets, all that decolletage, all hanging out and stuff like that, that is the Regency and Victorian, all that. So, we're going to see a lot of snatch waist all over the place, including myself, because I definitely have partaken in that corset situation, I'm like, here for it i mean listen and it's, it doesn't have to go with you know these big old skirts going on. no i'm feeling it with a pleated trouser like a menswear trouser i'm feeling it with a mini skirt not too many now that's one i still haven't i'm not doing it because i don't want my skivvies hanging out okay at the bottom of the skirt no i'm talking about pairing it with maxi column skirts a slit skirt there's so many different bottoms you can pair a corset with or you could put it over a button down shirt and it just looks so put together and beautiful yes yes please the corsets but i digress baggy jeans another another situation that by default i just have anyway because everything's just a little bit more loosey-goosey on me but it does give and stuffing it into an over the knee boot situation also really posh i love a good baggy denim i really do because you know i don't want to be all tight i don't want to wear tight clothes all the time like if i want to i'll put on a good legging right i put on a good bodycon situation that isn't too stretchy and tight right something that just gives a little bit more that has a little bit more softness to it i'm i'm kind of i've been over tight tight clothing i've never really been into it honestly when i was wearing it it was just because that was what was available at that time you know um but yeah baggy jeans with a, with a platform boot yeah platform sandal a little jill sander moment a little marnie yeah, a little tank top. Not them expensive ass tank tops though. I'm good there, I'm good there. But you see the vision, okay. Also tailoring. 
now. Pleated, darted, just, just tucked at the at the right point around the waist, at the right level of the ankle that you wanted. Like tailoring to me is regal. When you have something that's tailored to you, it just it's luxury. Um, blazers, oversized blazers, all that, everything that just has a tailored touch to it is definitely going to be something that I partake in. That's a trend this year. I think it's a trend that is a consistent trend. It's not, it's a classic situation that they're calling trendy, but it's consistent. Oh my God. Heavy duty leather. Y'all know I have like a, an older rag and bone, heavy, heavy, like almost patent leather jacket. I love that. I love an old school distressed big old motorcycle doofy looking ass leather. I think hardcore leather is so cool. I'm not feeling like the Mew Mew leather bags that are out that look like a lot of pockets and distress. It just looks like a lot of Y2K complicatedness. But I do love a heavy duty huge leather jacket like you belong in a motorcycle gang with distressing with distressing especially um and yeah is that is that all on my on my yes i'll partake i think that's all now when it comes to the no thank you list it's a little bit shorter and i've already touched on a few of them but those tank tops the loewe stamp the prod three to five hundred to six hundred dollars girl and here's the thing, it's white tank top. So it's like, for me, personally, for black women, for black women, we have makeup that is brown. Our skin, like, at the end of the day, like, if we're sweating a bit, like, our skin, like, we sweat in color sometimes. I'm not staying in an expensive ass white tank top. No, 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 absolutely not. I will go with the Hanes version. Thank you very much. I'm not buying a stamped logo tank top for four to five hundred dollars. Absolutely not. As much as I love those brands that have them, I just think that that's not the smartest thing to do. I mean, unless you're gonna, unless you're able to buy like ten at a time, because having to dry clean something like that, new, like, come on, one and done. I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna wear something that I know I'm gonna stain really easily and be pissed off about something that's like a lingering stain that the dry cleaner can't really get out like no i'm not doing it i think it's a waste love it on other people for the photo but like in real life baby no ballet slippers you know listen i'm a baller at heart like i play basketball my mom tried to make me do ballet and i was like girl i don't like it i'm uncomfortable it's too too ain't for me if you want me to go to these classes, give me some candy because girl, this ain't for me. I've never been a ballet girl, but I love ballet aesthetic, which is going to be like a big deal. I think throughout this year again, like Mew Mew did it last year. I think we're going to see a lot of it again, but especially the ballet slippers. Now, I'm not totally against like maybe a Margiela Tabby ballet slipper. They're cute, but like... And these are hard to find. The Mew Mew, the Mew Mew ballet slippers with the straps around the ankle, they're a little bit hard to find and I'm open to trying them. But honestly, I feel like the feet that I have, no thank you. I think that they're gonna hurt my feet. I already have bonions. I don't need no extra situations with my feet. I feel like it's just too damn flat. Not for these New York City hard ass streets with sometimes cobblestone. No, no thank you. I need a little bit more sustenance in the shoe. I just can't have a flat situation. And I'm not going to be prancing around in these streets either. I just think it's not for me. I love the concept on other people. Um, and even though I love other areas of the ballerina-esque situation, like really beautiful, creamy sweatpants and like the wrap tops and like some of like the arm warmer situations I'm here for, but for the ballet slippers, no. And that leads me to the other ballerina situation I'm not feeling, leg warmers. Girl, just put some socks on. Just put some thick ass socks on, please. Like, I mean, like if it's a leather leg warmer and it's giving, oh, this is a whole new boot shoe, maybe, but I've always found leg warmers to be annoying and not 
something that I reach for to use all the time when I did have them like no I live in New York and we do love a good textured cozy layered situation right but leg warmers I'm just not I'm not seeing it unless I, I don't know I don't know I might eat my words later but I, no thank you for now no thank you Y2K so there's some aspects of Y2K that I'm feeling and it, there's other aspects that I'm not. But I'm really feeling like, you know, the maxi skirts, the little frills, little, um, the little bit of glitter, you know, there's some bag trends that are very Y2K that I'm really feeling in just like neutral colors and whatnot. But when it comes to like the butterflies, hair clips, n no. I'm not putting them in my hair again. Not even the little clips to keep this thing in the front. Like just give me a regular bobby pin or whatever. I don't need that stress in my life to keep track of all those things. It reminds me of 13 year old life and it was it was all Lisa Frank and hair clips. And I'm, I'm good. I am good. Thank you, but no. Double belts, no thank you. It's It's doing a lot. Take one thing off. That's the part of Y2K that I don't want to deal with anymore. Like, we was doing too much. We had two belts. We had one big belt over a, a t-shirt and a skirt. I saw Katie Holmes wearing a long two-top shirt. Looked a hot-ass mess. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. That Y2K stuff, on the flip side of it, it looks frumpy and stupid. We doing too much. Coco Chanel said, take one thing off, honey. It's too much. Anyway. And another trend that it's not so much the Regency era like Bridgerton vibes, but the drop waist. I'm a, I, I already look like a, a, a little boy around my waist. Um, no, I just think it'll make me look just not as womanly as I want to look. I don't like drop waist and that's like a thing this year. I just, I never felt that drop waist actually looked good on anybody. Personally, sorry, respectfully, sorry. I don't, I, I don't think it's that flattering of a situation. I don't love that silhouette. Like it makes sense on certain things, but I, I never said, ooh, let me get a drop waist dress. Like, no, not at all. I just don't think it's a good look. Especially with like, um, like a rouge, a rouging effect. Oh no, child, there's gonna be a lot of that. No thank you. And as far as like bag trends are concerned, y'all know I'm not a bag girl, but you know what? I'm gonna do my best to actually stay away from clothing purchases this year. For the most part, the trends that I'm really feeling, I already have and been had, right? And because I'm not a bag girl, I'm not confident about talking about bag styles and whatnot, but this year I do want to treat myself to a few classics. I'm looking at the Fendi baguette. I'm looking at the Puzzle Loewe bag. I'm looking at Ferragamo, um, the, the newer collection um, of bags that they carry and some of their shoes. I'm really feeling their, um, their aesthetic. Um, what other bags am I really looking at? I do want a Dior saddle, but something that's a lot more, like, I don't want the typical, just regular leather ones. I want something that has a little bit more pizzazz. You know, I showed you guys the bags that I got for Christmas from Stodd. I like bags that have a very different aesthetic, um, not something that everyone else is wearing at this point in time, and um, something that just stands out, you know? So I, I love a good beaded bag. I love a good texture, colorful bag. Um, what other bags have I been staring at a little bit? I really wish I could have gotten into the Louis Vuitton collaboration with, um, I don't know how to say her first name, but um, Miss Kusama. Yeah, I really love the aesthetic of those bags because it's punchy, it's different. You know, it's it's the it's an artist's point of view of of Louis Vuitton and I really like those types of things. Um I can already see that this situation is going to be really expensive for me to invest in, but I do think I deserve and I will be working very hard this year so I will be able to afford four times over the bags that I want every time. Okay, speak it into the universe, manifesting, thank you Jesus. Mm -hmm. But anyway, 
yeah those are the bags i'm really into i want something that will stand the test of time and not depend on having to come back on a trend that you know is cyclical and comes back like 30 years later no i i want something that is going to be a consistent forever bag you know prada has beautiful shapes like that i will partake in that in something like that too um but maybe just in a certain color or a certain leather texture or something like that but yeah i'm, I'm gonna get into bags this year I, I definitely i don't need any more clothing things i don't need any more shoes well actually shoes let's discuss shoes real quick i actually do think i don't need any more shoes at all actually right but i have an abundance of quirky shoes very conversation starting type of shoes i don't have shoes that are very elegant and can go with everything i don't have nude color shoes i don't have like a tan boot let's say um i have a cheetah print but not a tan and that's something that could go with everything and i've actually been searching for a really great tan suede boot and i have not been able to find one at a reasonable price i saw up was it javante rossi with an 1800 dollars tan boot i was like girl bye, where are you going like uh, -uh i'm not doing that um but I, I would be open to buying shoes that are a little bit more classic looking and more neutral tone colors because I don't have a lot of those. I have a lot of quirky fun shoes. Um, so that that's the only thing. But really on my radar this year, a little handbag. I want some handbags. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. I'm gonna stop it here. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts? What are some of the trends that you're really excited about? And what are some of the trends that you were saying, girl, no, thank you too. Comment below, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends about me, okay? Because this is a family thing. We are in a community, all right? I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.